My attention is going from presence to the mind. And the more the mind chatters and the louder it is, the more my attention goes towards my mind. My question is, how do I let go of even the attention? Okay. You say that your attention is drifting between the state of presence and towards the mind. So there's this movement. Attention goes towards the state of presence, you say, but sometimes it's also fluctuating and moving towards mind. And the louder the mind stuff becomes, the more the attention is stuck there. Okay? But that is a report you have made. And the report means that attention is going to the state or the sense of presence where it stays. Huh? What watch is that? What knows that attention is gone to presence? and now is moved and is going now to mind. What perceives this? Where is the location of that which perceives the attention going to presence and then moving away from presence to mind? First of all, you have expressed a fact. The fact is that whether the attention goes to presence or to mind, it is observed, isn't it? But See, try and understand that first of all. You say the attention moves to presence. Where is presence? Hmm? If you don't understand these terms, you will soon come to understand them. Even if we don't explain. You see? But you say the state of presence is the feeling of being. It is the most natural thing. We don't have to talk so much about it. When you say or feel I, the feeling I or I am, it means I exist. I am. Am means to be. I is what? Which is the I that is being. I'm going to make it easy. Just I. Uh, refers to consciousness. I, consciousness, am. And I am here. That's what the sensation is. I, I am here. But because it has been so much associated, it is not a person. The sense of being is not personal. It is not a person. But because of habit and conditioning, whereby we believe that we are our bodies, we will gradually come to see how that took place and that we are our minds or conditioning and personalities and so on. Because of this belief, the I, which is actually the purest form of consciousness in manifestation, that I gets somehow converted into being a person. You see? So often when we speak I, and if you listen carefully when people are speaking, they don't know you're listening, you're listening, and you see when they say I, what are they referring to? They often are referring to their person, their personality, their sense of uh, themselves as person. But the true importance, the true meaning of I, is the state of presence, which is why we are here, just to clarify that, not just intellectually, but experientially. That change is going to happen. Whereby when you speak, not even only speak, but even as you function in the world of perceiving the, what the senses report, it will be coming to presence rather than to person. And that is going to make a huge difference to how this world will taste to you. The functioning of perception will have a much more profound uh, impact. I do, impact has a very strong word, but it will, the change will be impactful. Because when you experience from the state of person, it is very chaotic state, very unstable state. The person is also a form of consciousness but it is a very restless form of consciousness, very unstable. Presence 
however, is very different. When we perceive from the place of presence, your field of view is more panoramic, more open, more all-encompassing, uh, more silent, more joyful, more wise. So we can live a long time in the false idea of self, which is personhood or ego, until whatever, whatever the trigger is that helps us to begin to move away from the limited perspective of personhood and into the broader field of presence. You see? So let, I just use this moment to clarify a little bit. We will go over this again and again. So, what uh, you are speaking, you say, I observe my attention going towards presence and then going towards person or going towards the mind. And sometimes the mind becomes more and more loud. You see? And then I ask in turn, but both the sense of presence and the attention and the sense of mind are all perceived. Would you agree or not? Yes. Yes. Because then, if not only the mind and the thought activity is perceived, and nobody can refute that, the thought activity is, uh, is also being watched, but the sense of presence also is watched. And if the sense of presence is watched, it must be watched in or by something more subtle than presence. Would you not agree? You see? And even the attention, which is one of your most powerful instruments, hmm? the attention, because wherever attention goes, you're registering that as your experience. So attention has been put forward as one of the most powerful expressions of consciousness. But you are declaring that even the attention is observable. So therefore, something is more subtle than the attention itself. And by your very words, you have declared that it is already so. They are observed. By what are they observed? I don't want a mental answer, you see. Look and feel. Are they observed or not? The sense of presence is what? That state of being which is not attached to anything that it is perceiving. Do you know that you look through your senses? You look at many things. I look at these flowers, how beautiful they are, made and everything, without becoming attached to them. I don't want anything from it. Okay? So therefore, if I want nothing more than just to observe it for a moment, uh, I don't want to own it, I don't want to have a relationship with the flower, okay? So then it doesn't register any deep impressions within my consciousness, so I am not disturbed by it. And that's got nothing to do with spirituality. We are functioning like this about most things in life, you see them, interact with them, and they don't leave any footprints inside your consciousness. Why? Because you don't want a relationship with them particularly. You don't want to own it. You don't want to control it. And that is a wonderful thing about consciousness. If you don't want to manipulate, then everything is open to you, and nothing will disturb you. So, the fact that we are perceiving doesn't necessarily lead to attachment to the objects of perception. And though you are perceiving, if you are not wanting to control, manipulate, own something, then you will enjoy the functioning of perception. I ask something which is not an easy answer for most people because your mind you can observe much more easily. 
you can say whoa my mind is whoa it's just it's like it's going to burst open my head is going to burst open with thoughts there's so much pressure going on so there's something aware of this pressure so if I say to you just let that pressure be for a moment okay but just stay in the place of the awareness of it just be the awareness and almost immediately if you follow that instruction it will create a change in the sense of pressure or strain because you are not feeding you are not feeding that pulsation you are paying attention to the awareness in which it is recognized that simple change of attention will create a different environment and the more you discover this the more you feel whoa can I do it with anything else you, say, you can do that with everything so if you say you have understood that you say that the attention goes to presence but then if it will stay with presence it will be fine but sometimes it goes to the mind and the mind is loud and I don't like that how can I keep it to stay in presence would that be your question yes sir yes so how can the mind the attention just stay with presence um, the habit will change how did it come to start going to the mind what makes it go to the mind the mind is always chatting something always giving you some instruction always telling some lies or exaggerating something what's the attraction with that because it is also a creative area of creative possibilities and attachments identity all of this is part of the minds function and play so we have some interest in that of course hmm? we have a, a love-hate relationship with our minds when you want something from the mind you very much like it but when it goes when it crosses the line without your permission you don't like it and you say okay mind enough go and you go mm -mm. I like it here you see and then you say oh my gosh you know I cannot control my mind how can I control my mind leave it alone what mind are we talking about not just a practical mind you have practical mind you have to do even a sage has to use his practical mind that's not the mind that causes the trouble it's more the psychological side of the mind and what kind of what is that area that is to do a lot with who you think you are your person your desires your attachments and so on that is what is the fascination why we go to the mind because so much of our aspiration memories desires attachments self-image is the product of the psychological mind the one who is free is free of the influence of the psychological mind do we follow what I'm saying I need sometimes some feedback to know that you're not sleeping with your eyes open no? okay so the one who is free is free from the psychological influence of the mind they don't want they don't want anything from mind like in that case like they don't need to feel that people love them or if people curse them or they fall to bits or something like that or they're holding on to some strong negative impressions or something they have transcended that as you can yourself and will because it is fixed in life that something is going to turn up the pressure a little bit from time to time to keep you moving otherwise you go to sleep and you didn't come to the earth to sleep but to wake up so something has to keep you on the move 
and sometimes it is pain suffering gets you moving strong intense experiences get you to start to use your your deeper spiritual muscles you begin to reflect more you become more more deep more wise and these are the the phases in which consciousness will grow back into itself meaning what to be free from the influence and the manipulations of the psychological mind that's all a human being has to do is to overcome the influence the sticky influence of the psychological identity that is what will lead to the state we call awakening if I can put it in simple terms and we all know what it feels like when your mind is giving you a good hiding isn't it yeah? when we are on the, uh, the, the grip of strong psychological emotional um, states and uh, it amounts to a kind of suffering but the suffering in turn triggers in us the aspiration to be free of suffering and once you are developing the aspiration to be free of suffering you become more open you have to become more open enough to be guided out of your state of suffering so sometimes like this I have to use your question a little bit to just to broaden things out a little bit so that we can see in a more holistic way and all of this is going to help you in some way to just just to see in a more from a more aerial point of view rather than from seeing from positions of ego coming back again I say something must be aware of the sense of presence and when the attention goes towards presence and when it moves seemingly it moves away from presence and goes towards the mind here is a little tip for you that all troubles are personal all difficulties have the person behind them whenever you go into the state of personhood the sense of a problematic existence become more alive more virile for you the more you move into a less personal or let's say an impersonal state of consciousness the sense of problems are diminishing and gradually you will not have in your mind that you can have some fixed problem a problem does not exist apart from the thinking mind and the sense of the person in it this is going to be demonstrated over and over and over again that the problems you have you only imagine you have okay so how we recover this I don't know I don't have some blueprint thankfully so everything is going to arise spontaneously as it is right now as we speak about it your question may be adding towards how can I stabilize the attention in presence? If I ask you, not just you, anyone who wants to join in, any question I'm speaking about, anybody can join in, okay? That's economics. Because I can't go to each one like this, so anyone can be on this boat. If I were to ask you right now to leave this question aside, how can I stabilize the attention in presence? So leave this question now. Don't pick up any new question for a moment. Leave this question, leave any question for a moment. Don't hold on to any identity okay don't hold on to any identity for a moment just while we're speaking 
you will you want to participate in this because we can get somewhere right now you don't hold on to anything empty the mind of of all its its obsessions or contents meaning what just leave it aside don't give any further attention don't be holding on to any favorite concepts for a minute just put everything down no pockets empty handed can we do this leave everything aside now and don't pick up any new concept done uh, somebody say done okay done okay. well done we'll see now from this place if it's if, if you followed my advice it leads you to somewhere you're discovering something you're right here don't collect anything don't push anything you've already left every idea aside for a moment no? and you're not picking up anything new speak from this place something I love you <laughs> speak from this place don't hold on to any concept at all first of all you can do it and remarkably quickly also you're not holding on to any idea mm -hmm. but you're not suffocating your senses let the senses breathe let them be <sighs> yes don't be a manager let the senses function by their own laws you don't hold on even to the sense I even to the sense I and its content for one moment don't touch anything no and give me some feedback of what is your state right now Tell me. What is happening there? There are no words. There are no words, no words. It's true, no words there. <laughs> hmm? Where are these tears coming from? What is happening there? Hmm? I don't even know. You don't know. That is perfectly okay. Are you keeping some state? Are you holding on to to anything here? Something feels like it's trying to. <laughs> yeah. Something feels like it's trying to hold on. So again, you don't touch this thing. You're already here. You are already here. You're not trying to get here now. But this here is a much purer place than any former state. And sometimes the mind is saying, okay, okay, all right, we've done it. Come, come, let's, let's get back to real business. Let's come back to reality, or whatever it is, okay? But that's just another thought. You are just here. It's just here. 
When does this finish? We're not speculating now. From inside the experience itself. Hmm? When does this finish? Did you create this? Again, you are not holding on to any state. I will not ask you to create or to visualize something. Because any object visualized is only another image. It, was, it, has no, it will pass and be replaced by another image. So don't engage with any images or any concept or any idea about self. Nothing at all. Leave everything. When you leave everything, you will come to a point when there remains something here which cannot be taken out. It cannot be put aside. Are we on the same page with this? Because you are the only one who can validate what I'm speaking. If you follow, you will see, but where, where are you now? Are you in some strange twilight zone? How are you feeling when you're not attached to any particular concept? Hmm? Any intention? Any object? Are you well? Are you lacking something? Are you missing something important? Are you being manipulated? Have I sprinkled magic powder over you? No. You are in a very natural state. Hmm? Now I can ask you a question I couldn't ask before. And the question is, are you suffering? No. Would you like that this state should go away now? No. No. How will this end? This where does it finish? What time will it finish? What time is it there? You say, I'm fine here. Hmm? I'm not troubled, I'm not suffering. Some may even feel very relaxed and, and happy and, well, this feels very good. Hmm? Okay. Where does it finish? Or where does it, does it fade? Does it begin to fade away? Some people say, yes, actually, I just remembered, I just got an email and suddenly that state is gone. The email didn't say that state is going to go, okay? But I read the email and somehow the state is gone. So while it is here, tell me if it can go. And also, did it come? So I'm referring to this state as your natural state. Do you have to keep quiet? 
Breathe slowly. Do you have to keep it? Huh? Ah, he says there is something that's trying to hold on to it. Now, some people may feel, you know, they may even say, How can I keep it, Uji? How can I keep it? I'm saying, How are you keeping it now? He said, There's a certain amount of vigilance needed to maintain the state. Okay? The vigilance is not to maintain the state. If there's a vigilance, is the vigilance to see that you're not distracted from the state. Isn't it? It's not to, it doesn't need your vigilance. It is. Okay? But if the vigilance is needed, is to watch that how quickly, because your mind even, you see, is going to try to distract you, and you know what one of the clever distractions is, is to say, how can I keep it? Well, it cannot be kept. It is your natural state. But if you buy this idea, yes, something is trying to keep it, to hold on to it. You see? And I say, no, no, keep holding on to it. Then I've given you a burden. Because you're holding on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Someone says, hey, George, yeah? Oh, ah, 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 it's, gone. it's gone, isn't it? So, it is not something you have to hold on to. And it is not holding on to you either. So, these are merely thoughts. They come. How can I keep it? Very clever, you see? Because the minute you start to want to keep it, you find you cannot keep it. It's gone. Then you say, oh my God, it's gone. You see? And these are just the illusions that are playing. Actually, nothing has happened. It is still the same. Don't pick up any new thoughts. You don't need them. We always feel that you need to prepare your lunch box of thoughts for your picnic of confusion, basically. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm going to meet this person. I must practice what I'm going to say. People even spend time in front of the mirror saying, Okay, I don't like that. Okay? So, we are afraid, somehow, to just be. It's like you have to be prepared. And nothing can prepare you hmm, for what you don't know is going to happen. Your best preparation is to be in your natural state of emptiness. But our culture and conditioning makes us afraid to trust that. You feel, if I don't practice, I won't know what to say. But when you practice what to say, and you say it in the moment, it's always out of sync with what is needed in that moment. Like the person who practices a speech one week before and now delivers the speech and nobody can listen to it. What the hell is he talking about? Because you're not in synchronicity. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust your audience. You don't trust consciousness. So how are you going to manage in this world? You're always out of sync. The mind will even get you, if you buy into this type of thing, if I throw you an apple, okay, it will try to teach you before how to catch an apple. You must stand like this. Okay? 
and then you'll find you can catch apples like that. But not bananas. No, bananas you have to... <laughs> you see? And that's what we've been doing all our life. Practicing to be natural. Natural does not need any practice. So if there is a practice, it begins to be how to avoid developing something you don't need. And this is what is going to take place a bit. No matter how much you rehearse and practice for life, you will never be in sync as much as one who is naturally awake and is totally unprepared in the way that you are thinking. They are totally meeting life spontaneously, intuitively, fresh. Hmm? They are not saving up any kind of moves to manipulate or to influence or to trick things. So this is just a part of it. But this thing about being empty brings up fear in the mind. Fear that you look foolish, that you didn't prepare enough. And of course, some practical things you have to prepare for. If you have never cooked an omelette, and then you have invited a lot of people home for an omelette evening, and you have never cooked, and then you may need a little practice. But you don't need any practice to be what you are. Simple exercise, leave everything, drop everything, drop everything, come back until there's nothing more to drop. And pay attention to what is here as it is. and see if it can be defined. See if it is personal. That is a simple exercise anybody can do. Often people ask, you know, how can I balance my spiritual life with my daily life? You see? That's a very big thing. <laughs> how can you balance so I say, for you, I have very good news. Forget about it. You cannot balance anything. This you that you are speaking from is already an imbalance. You see, in your natural state, your natural state is not concerned about balance. Sometimes people say, I've been doing the inquiry, but I cannot say to anyone, I cannot say, yes, okay, I am that. I said, well, who's asking you to say you are that? <laughs> when something is natural for you, you don't go about declaring it. You don't go about saying, hey, guys, look, I'm breathing. <laughs> no, you don't say that because it is totally natural for you. So if you say, look, I am the awakened one, okay? And think everyone is going to go, oh, awakened. <laughs> you don't have to say anything about it. The one who is awake is not thinking, oh, I'm awake. I'm awake. No. Even this term, they may not speak about it. You will speak about it until it is clear for you, and then it will not happen. You will not have to speak about it. You don't go around saying, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Hello? I'm a you don't do it. Why? Because you have no doubt about it. 
in a natural state, you won't be saying, look, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm enlightened. You will not say. It would seem ridiculous. But when we are conversing and people are speaking, you know, how can I become so and so? Then something will speak from the place of truth and it will speak what is appropriate to the needs of that particular moment. So it's not even that you are necessarily answering a question, perhaps you are answering the questioner even. Can you see a difference? Not everyone understands in the same way. Not everyone understands in the same way. So if you have a kind of a ready-made answer, life doesn't work like that. In that moment, if you are attuned, you know, then what you speak, you may be listening to yourself for the first time. It can happen like that. Have you not surprised yourself? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.